My name is Colin McAndrew, and this is my colleague and friend, Tom Finucane. Hi, how are you? Uh, we run a project together called Map the Way. Now, some people may be familiar with it, some people may not be familiar with it. So we're going to give uh, a brief history of Map the Way. Uh, when I was in first year of college, um, <clears throat> I started working on a mapping project that was aimed around helping people with physical and or intellectual disabilities. Prior to that, both Tom and I uh, were working on the hashtag Map Lesotho project when we were in secondary school. Um, today, we are working together to try and create tasks and awareness around mapping um, to help people with physical and or intellectual disabilities accessing the streets and the urban areas, but also suburban areas. Um, we are part of a university society called Enactus, and we recently uh, were awarded some funding by Ford Motor Company, which Tom is going to tell you about. So we took part in a Ford initiative called the Ford Mobility Challenge. And this was based around the idea of Ford supporting uh, social enterprises set up by students that really focus on a problem around mobility all around the world could have been anything. So we applied for this and we were selected as one project that was in the top four, top 60 teams. And we were in the top three, so we flew to out to Palo Alto to the Ford Mobility Labs where we gave a presentation to Ford's executives and uh, we won an investment of $20,000 and placed second in the world in, in Ford Mobility Challenge. It was introduced this year and it really was to present mobility related social enterprises to Ford in which we'd be able to grow and they could become part of our journey. And that's that's uh, that's exactly uh, what it's about. Couldn't have put it better myself, Tom. Um, so what we're here to present to you today is firstly, what does the what does good look like for mapping that helps people with disabilities? Secondly, what myself and Tom are doing to achieve good here in Ireland. And thirdly, I'll ask of you to kind of help us create a task around this and create a bit of a movement around it. So firstly, uh, if you were to look onto tag info at OpenStreetMap um, under the disabilities ca category, you'll see a map of the world and that will show you where this activity and this interest is happening in um, disability tagging. So there is a lot of pro there are a lot of projects in Central Europe the likes of France and Germany also. Um, there's even a even a um, a website called wheelmap.org that uses uses a traffic light kind of color coding for accessibility for entry into a building. So say for example if a building has ramps on each side and they're you know not too steep, that's a green that's a green uh, a green flag for wheelchair accessibility. Uh, if it only has steps, that's obviously a red flag. Um, Tom and I met with the startup uh, about two years ago called way to be not to be confused with ourselves, Map the Way. And way to be are working on a project that involves creating a type of wearable to help people with autism uh, navigate and move around um, independently uh, to access maps in an accessible way. As many of us know, Google Maps is not um, not always perfectly detailed, and that can cause a lot of problem for many people we surveyed in our local arch club in Port Marnock. Uh, Google Maps was their primary resource for maps when they were um, traveling by foot. So we have to understand that this world should be designed for everyone of any ability. So good looks like uh, all the foot pavements being mapped. 
ramps being mapped, uh, different things like street furniture, uh, benches where possible could be mapped. Uh, Tom and I do believe that a lot of that will be done through on, on the, on the ground um, pillory work because uh, it can be quite hard to see on a uh, on, on Jossum or on ID Editor whether there's a bench there or not. So in, in addition to this, uh, working with our partner way to be, we want to map all the traffic lights and zebra crossings in the urban areas in Ireland, Dublin, particularly Cork, Limerick um, and Galway. These these will help people to cross the cross the road more safely and make the maps more accessible when way to be and other apps and other startups we've worked with try to use OpenStreetMap. They said it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant tool. It's a brilliant resource. It's constantly being updated and it's easy to integrate into an application. However, because very few uh, map providers have really taken a deep dive and a, a very intense drive into mapping the, um, for people with disabilities, a lot of stuff is missing. So good looks like having all that mapped. And I'm sure some of you are thinking to yourself, that would be amazing to have everything mapped, but we have to aim for the best possible. Tom and I will be launching a pilot program in different arch clubs and hopefully with some physical disability groups such as uh, the Irish Wheelchair Foundation. Um, and that would that would allow us to teach people with disabilities to map these features because I don't think anyone can understand the world around them and the challenges of mobility um, as well as someone who lives with a disability every day. And Tom is going to maybe talk us a little bit through more some of our plans. So the Irish Club is a network of community centres for people with disabilities. So one of the main reasons that we chose to work with the Irish Club was that it's not just a one-off programme. It's, it's part of a network that surrounds Dublin and the country. So we thought that if we can start a pilot programme in that, it'll go, give us a good step into more of a national approach. So our pilot program will involve taking a, a small number of students on board to teach them the basics of mapping so that we can really get an understanding of, we can teach them how to map, but they can kind of teach us where the map's downfalls are from their perspective. Because what was pointed out to myself and Colin when we were talking to these people was that the maps are perfect for somebody who does not face that issue. It's only when you're faced with an issue that and some overlook that is so small to somebody else, it, it can change their entire route, their direction. Mm. So with our investment from Ford, we're going to buy some laptops and be on the ground with them, teaching them how to map on OpenStreetMap so that they can add in the edits that they need into the map. As well as this, we'll we're going to connect with the there's a travel travel hub that there's a group of people that have physical and or intellectual disabilities that, that travel on public transport so we're gonna go with them to see what they really need because i know in france there is there's a project that maps all the accessibility points into train stations nationwide so they're trying to do something similar enough to that mm. so one aim for us is to really get on the ground there as well so we can understand where the irish system downfalls or looks over somebody like that exactly so uh, i had spoken with kieran riley um from minutes previously he's a uh, he's a member of the mapping community here in ireland and he had worked on some the designs and studied some designs of train stations and different features are there. A lot of train stations now have ramps, but some don't. I believe uh, between myself and Tom, we're also hoping to reach out to some of these train stations and Inner Darren and the different public transport networks to under to get a better picture of where maps can play a part in that. 
So those are some of our plans, our kind of ask and our uh, raison d'etre to being here is to ask for your help in creating a national task on the OpenStreetMap Ireland uh, website, the tasking manager, that we can ask people who are willing to give a bit of their time uh, to map some features such as pavements, such as ramps and different uh, different areas. We'll, we will be posting out lists of kind of specific features to tag. Uh, we'd also be very appreciative if anyone had any thoughts as to what we could add. Um, I presented this at work uh, one day and they said, well, OK, you can map steps, but maybe map the number of steps. So I mapped the number of steps into my workplace and uh, I measure, I even measured uh, the different the, the height between the steps. Um, so those those kind of details can really help uh, someone who, say, for example, is suffering with bad back injury. Um, so that that really concludes our part of the conversation. Uh, we'd love to hear from you if you'd be interested in helping us um, create a national task for mapping uh, features and tagging areas uh, that are of interest to people with physical and or intellectual disabilities. One of the main things that we're really interested in is facilitating the conversation from rather a one a one way communication to a proper conversation where there's back and forth from each party because we feel that the one way conversations have led us to where there are some pieces of maps lacking that someone really needs to travel around freely. So by facilitating that two way conversation, we can really get the needs of the people across while helping them to map at the same time. So please help. <laughs> that's that's our that's our that's our piece. If anyone wants to use the public chat or if they can speak. So what kind of feedback have you got from the art users? So we have gotten a, a short list just from our local um, art club of what makes a difference when they're traveling. Train stations and ramps are the key ones, um, but traffic lights as well that are, that, you know, some, one person said that some traffic lights are louder than others. I, I, I we don't have any tests to prove that, but definitely the, uh, the raised, the raised platform by traffic lights, um, is absolutely essential, but to have that mapped. So if someone who does have visual impairments, uh, they can factor that in to the maps because we can use audio maps as well. How is that being used with the app? I mean, so like how smooth is that process to import that and make it available to the uh, members of Arch? So in terms of the app that will be presented to um, particularly the Arch Club community, uh, that's been made by our partners uh, way to be. Um, they are their separate entity. Um, what what way to be are doing is they're creating an app that will run off the OpenStreetMap API and and engine, and that that data will feed in. And then from there, they would create a smart auto route system that would say, for example, only use traffic lights or only use traffic lights where there's the raised um, raised ground. Hi, Colin. Hello. Hello, Brian Holden said here. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I did, oh, about seven years ago, do a map, not on OpenStreetMap, but based on it, uh, with the footpath ramps for wheelchairs at the junctions in Mount Merion. Yes. Um, because there are a number of wheelchair users around here. And I got so far with it and then stopped. So I'm I'm interested that you're, if you like, pushing this out further with steps and station ramps and things. And mm. I'd be interested not in setting anything up with you or helping on that, but certainly in doing walking surveys and adding details to steps. 
I think there are enough steps mapped already in OpenStreetMap that will stretch if put together from the National Library to Kingsbridge Station or Houston Station. So the, there's a lot of raw information there that doesn't have information as to how many or how high they are. That's all. That's that's fantastic, Brian. Uh, thank you. To, to very grateful to hear that um, you know, you've worked on these projects, uh, this, this type of project before, and you'd be interested in the walking survey. You you talked about there's a different perspective for somebody who lives with a disability. I'm wondering, is there some kind of educational material that you could develop that, say, like in like a leaflet or something or a video or something? Yes, so we're currently working on, uh, during this uh, COVID-19 period, is both myself and Tom uh, are at home. We are currently working on an educational pack and assembling different pieces of knowledge to uh, kind of educate both sides of the story, people who map uh, regularly at the moment who may be not living with a physical or intellectual disability to give an insight as to the scale of the issue, but also how to tackle that issue. Similarly, we're currently working on uh, a, an education, a lesson plan really, a curriculum for teaching people with physical and or intellectual disabilities how to map in, in an accessible way. Once you have put that together, then um, Austin Marland will do his best to uh, to promote that material, like on on Twitter and Facebook and so on. That that'd be great to get the get the support, particularly on social media, from yourselves at OpenStreetMap Ireland. I think it's like Tom said earlier. It's about opening the dialogue. It's about opening the conversation. And you know what I think. What I think we can all rally behind is the idea that. Ireland could be the best mapped, uh, best mapped country, and the best mapped for people with all abilities. And have they, so is there like a particular place where maybe we could do like a use case, you know, where we could kind of pick an area around one of the arch clubs and kind of say within like a two kilometer radius, just have that done to a certain standard? Yes, so there has been a lot of mapping, particularly mapillary mapping in Port Marnock. Port Marnock Art Club being the the centre that myself and Tom would have the closest links to at the moment. Uh, a lot of the mapillary uh, work has been led um, by Day Big C here on. Um, so yeah, the, the kind of the touch points there have been mapped on the mapillary side. What we'd be thinking of doing actually is working on uh, as a use case Dublin City. Now I know I know that can be that's that's quite a quite an area, but one uh, one area in particular was noted out by our partners at Way to Be College Green Dublin, where Trinity is. Different things like traffic lights, uh, footpaths, and um, even the level the level ground. All of that is is, is actually can still be quite lacking in terms of map data. So if we could take College Green, even as an example, I think you have one of the best cases of, you know, pedestrian navigation there. And if we could understand that, and if we understand how we can make that better, I think we could really uh, scale it to anywhere in the country. Um, hi, can I? Hi, Rory. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm 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 Roy McCann. Yeah, I, just, I I pumped in a bit l late there now. Uh, I wonder. I, I've uh, written a few notes. I can I can give you a bit of a, a brain dump. And um, some things that occurred to me. Firstly, congrats, fair play to the both of you for winning that uh, contest thing and uh, getting to California. That's 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 not bad at all. Now, um, do you, do you know about uh, the app Street Complete? It's for Androids. And uh, it it is a quick and simple OSM editor, so um, it's just for very specific uh, quests they call it. But you can add um, like wheelchair accessibility or or things like that, uh, and including like uh, does this um, bus stop have um, ramps or tac like uh, tactile uh, paving at yeah. pedestrian crossings, and whether there's a, a footpath on the side of the road or not. Um, I, I use it like it's my second most used OSM editor after after Jasm, 
um, because it it they just it's just so easy to use. So if you're doing walking surveys and you want to do that, I would I really recommend you looking into that because it just makes it like just so much faster and easier to do it because it's just like it'll pop up. Do you doing this? Yes, no. It, does this have a uh, um, like audio signals? Yes or no? And it's 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 really handy. So that that could be a handy one for you to use, and that's all built into that. Um. You can also suggest things to them, uh, new quests if you want to, to map new and, and new feature. They have a they have a book tracker. It's all open source. It's only on Android though. Um, so definitely look into Street Complete. And the other one that's um, that could be handy, um, less for walking thing, but there's um, this Pick for Review, another uh, online editing um, uh, program from um, from a guy in Brittany, Adrian Pavine, I think, uh, and he um, it, it uses Mapillary. You you. Uh, um, you you can just sort of combine things. You can say, show me every uh, I don't know bench that doesn't have a backrest thing, for example, and uh, and then oh. it looks for for ones that are near that that have mapillary images, and then it will present you an image from say mapillary or OpenStreetCam, uh, and say, hey, there's a there's a bench here. Does this have a, a, a backrest? Yes or no? Um, they and and so that was used in I believe Istanbul to add. Uh, wheelchair accessibility for like whether the pedestrian crossing, whether the ramp is uh, flush with the with the road or not. You know, is there a step? Um, and and you can actually copy and paste that to um, to uh, to like other other regions or or just or make your own one. I've 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 added uh, new ones as well. So pick for review is a is a handy way if when you can't get out and about, a handy way to um, to actually add this data to OSM. As well, uh, using using the mapillary imagery. So if you're doing a walking uh, tour, eventually when we can all go outside. Uh, well, although I, I live in Germany, so uh, I, I can actually go to the shops now. Um, nice. But uh, uh, that that you can take mapillary images, and that can be used even years later to, to be to be useful for that. So that's um, that's definitely something to, to look into those two as well. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll brain dump some links into the, into the chat thing in a minute. Don't worry. Um, Thank you. I don't know if you've heard of those those things. Um, and you'd you'd mentioned about um, getting that grant. So yeah, fair play. The the OpenStreetMap Foundation has a is now starting a micro grants program. Where uh, now I'm not on the committee for that, but um, yeah, basically we've all this money and we need to do something with it. If if you're not in if you're not a member of the foundation, you should join the foundation. Uh, but um, there there is going to be um, money given out micro grants up to like five five thousand euro or something like that. Or, um, uh, if if you uh, if you are uh, looking for cash, um, Tad mentioned um, doing like leaflets, educational material. Uh, the communications working group, which I'm on, is does have um, does also want to spend money, and I have made lots of OpenStreetMap promotional material. It's basically just stickers. I have I have lots of stickers. So um, if if you want, I can send you stickers because I have a lot of stickers. I'll I'll, oh. I'll, I'll post you a link. <laughs> so oh, if you want to oh, yeah oh yeah, send uh, stickers, I can send you them. But I do would like to do leaflets at some point. Just just kind of. Uh, you know, this is what OSM is. So if you do actually do anything uh, like that and you have any kind of design, yeah, we well, definitely send us a, a, a file and, and maybe we can print it out and uh, yeah, give it away. <laughs> uh, a lot of these things are, are very good in bulk. Um, and we can probably yeah. throw through some of the um, the translators, people that help translate things so we can get it in various languages. Uh, if, you, if you do design something, make something seriously, very, this OSM is full of volunteers, even just anything would, probably help um so yeah that's that... fantastic rory that would that'd be great um firstly those are two fantastic research uh, resources street complete and uh, pick for review i personally hadn't heard of them before yeah. um so that's definitely stuff we myself and tom can start uh really looking into and really using thank you for that and yeah we'd love to collaborate uh in terms of the communications piece and um uh, that's that's a really attractive idea for us, uh, me and Tom, to get out into different languages. Because whilst whilst our main focus is to work on the project in Ireland, really, it's it's to make a universal uh, change. Yeah. Sorry, I, hope um, I didn't stop your thought. Please keep talking. No, no, that's that's kind of the the other the other thing I would say is there's um the Open Street Foundation recently adopted a diversity statement. To um, we're trying to get a bit better with uh with 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 diversity uh, in OSM and um so we we basically just made a there's there's a website that says yes diversity is good and that does include various uh like um 
uh, disabilities and, and neurotypicalities and stuff is, is things we want to look at. Um, we even at, I don't know if you, at the last State of the Map conference, we had the little badges for um, like communication badges, like kind of a, a, a green, yellow, red thing about like, especially more sort of like um, autistic or neurotypical people who, who sort of don't really want to be people to talk to them at certain points or whatever, you know, if, if, if they, uh, they're finding it a bit much, we actually had different um, badges to sort of say like, don't talk to me unless I talk to you first. Um, just to, to try to be more welcoming to, um, to all kinds of people. So that's, um, that's sort of another, basically you're saying things that we, uh, you know, that, that a lot of people in OSM want to, want to also help with. So there is, hopefully we, we can, we can, we can help on that. And there's, um, there's a diversity, talk mailing list as well, which can be a handy way to just send a message out to um, to people in OSM who are interested in that. I will, I will brain dump these links. So yeah, anyway, fair play, congrats, keep going. Thanks so much, Rory, that's, that's, all. that's brilliant. That's, uh, I, I think myself and Tom can say this has been a brilliant uh, conference call. We've learned a lot and we really appreciate all the positive feedback and support from all of you.